welcome to New Europe Studios, where you can watch us make the news. With us today is Marilena Copa, member of the European Parliament. Uh, she's from Greece, and she's also the coordinator of the Socialist Group on Defense and Security. We will uh, discuss a rising phenomenon, which is the rise of extremism in Europe, especially as now we are moving towards the European elections. Uh, welcome to New Europe Studios, Ms. Copa. Uh, in a little more than two months, we will have the European elections. Uh, there is a very strong chance that uh, this, in this case we will see for the first time uh, extremist uh, groups represented in the European Parliament. Uh, what do you think has led to this situation? You're absolutely right. I think these are the most crucial European elections ever because we are faced with the risk to have the most anti-European Parliament ever in uh, most, if not in all European countries, extremism is on the rise. And uh, it's something that uh, s strong pro-European forces have not managed to tackle up to now. What are the causes? I think economic crisis is at the very, very core uh, of this issue. The economic crisis, which in fact was not only an economic crisis, it was a crisis of values, social crisis, a moral crisis of Europe. And this had as a result the rise of populism, extremism, and of course of uh, uh, extreme right phenomena as Golden Dawn in Greece, for example, or Jobbik in Hungary. In Hungary. Uh, let me also add to that, that uh, this this phenomena, which are not only in Greece and in uh, Hungary, of course, I mentioned these countries because they as have an example, also as, as an yes, example, example because there they had also the mm -hmm. paramilitary yes. component, which, which makes is more visible in a way, visible and uh, much more violent, mm -hmm. is everywhere. Uh, and if we don't manage to find a way to respond to the causes of that, then I think Europe is in a very, very big trouble in the years to come. Well, you mentioned many causes to that. Uh, and then you mentioned, you mentioned uh, us finding a way of responding to this phenomenon. Uh, obviously, for this phenomenon to take this uh, magnitude, there must have been also a lack of leadership, both in the national governments and in the European Union. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. Uh, let me start first at the European level. In fact, what most people see in the top uh, posts, in the top seats in Europe, are most functionaries and not real leadership. We are far away from the Delors era, where we had people, pro-Europeans, with a vision. Yes. Barroso uh, seemed to be uh, an employee of Mrs. Merkel for many Europeans, and this, of course, harms the image of Europe. But if I may add, to what we are talking, uh, we are saying about causes. I think unemployment, which was one of the repercussions of the economic crisis, is the reason, <coughs> is one of the main reasons for the rise of extremism. And I'll explain myself. Uh, I always take examples from history. When in the 30s there was a huge economic crisis in the United States because of the crisis of 29, and of course yes. in Europe, there were two different models of response to the crisis. The one was the New Deal of Roosevelt, where he created jobs, jobs, and jobs. He, you know, w what they say as a joke, that he even gave jobs to people to open, to begin something yes. that would be stopped in the afternoon and begin again the next day. Uh, in Europe, at that time, they did not tackle the problem. They followed the, the exact opposite, let's the say. The exact direction. opposite. And what happened? Mm -hmm. Hitler and the rise of the Nazi uh, movement. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to say that we are at the moment of uh, repetition mm -hmm. because history does not repeat itself in a linear manner. But we should have taken lessons from the past. And I'm afraid Europe seems uh, not to be in this uh, state of mind. And it's a pity, and we are in a grave danger. You are representing Greece to the European Parliament. Uh, Greece is the country that first went into, well, got a taste of European solidarity. Let us, let us term it like that. 
and uh, Greece is the country where we had the most visible rise of extremes during this period, during the period of austerity. Um, do you believe that there is something wrong in the mix of the policies that were uh, imposed on Greece or on the way that the Greek governments were implementing these uh, measures? I think it's the, mainly it's a question of policy. It was a policy of uh, austerity with uh, financial de discipline. Don't take me wrong, Greece needed discipline. We made a lot of mistakes for many decades in the past. But to focus only on austerity without the growth component, this was a huge mistake. Where do we stand now? Greece has lost 25 of its GDP. It has an unemployment at about 29% and a youth unemployment about 63%. 63% is a non-viable percentage. Absolutely. It, you know, it, it's a total disaster. It's like a war. That means that more than half of Greek youth has to emigrate to find a job. Uh, it will take years, if not decades, to put the country on track. And this is because of a wrong mix of the recipe. We needed discipline on our finance, that's sure, and on public sector. But to uh, focus only on discipline without a growth component, without focusing on, so, on employment and creating jobs, it's a huge mistake that my country, but also other countries, because unfortunately Portugal is exactly on the same line, I think it's a mistake. Uh, and for which we will all pay for many years to come. Uh, of course, uh, the, the problems, let's say, like uh, financial problems or economic problems or uh, unemployment are in the basis of this situation. But of course, there is also the component on the way these problems are tackled. Uh, do you believe that if, let's say, we had statesmen, if we had serious political forces, uh, the situation will uh, develop in a different way? Uh, I mean, I mean you are coming more, again both to increase, the question, yes. you're right, you're coming again and rightly so to the question of leadership. Yes. No, it's true, we don't have true leaders in Europe now. And it's not only the case for Greece, but also for other um, European states. Because, you know, leaders can make compromises, can find ways of consensus. This was not the case for forces in Greece, because, uh, in fact, what to need what we, we would have needed in Greece is a broad alliance of all the forces for the salvation of the country. We were not at that point. Even uh, today's government, Ms. Uh, Prime Minister Mr. Samaras, for about two years opposed the George Andreou government and on the same issues and then came and implemented the same policy. We've lost too much of important time. Things could have been better. I don't say that they could have been ideal, but much more better than the situation. When I say better, it's about hu uh, people's lives. It's about pensions, it's about salaries, it's about quality of life. And uh, we should, all of us, have been much more cautious when uh, creating alliance, for dealing with the opposition. I think we lost an important time in Greece and people are Paying, paying this in a very hard way. But of course we see the same phenomena, perhaps in a smaller scale, developing in other countries. For example, uh, in countries like France. Uh, sometimes I speak with French people and they seem to voice the same concerns as the Greeks, even if the, their, econo their economy is not in the same state as the Greeks, but they feel it, they feel the threat in the same way. Uh, so this is not uh, only no, no, in Greece, this is all over Europe. That's why probably, I suppose you agree with this, that's why there uh, was one of the reasons that the extremes are rising all over Europe. Absolutely. Not only right-wing extremism, of course, but it's mostly right-wing extremism. Why do you think this is very, uh, this is very tempting, let's say, especially to young voters? Because it's no to everything. It's uh, an expression of anger and young people that see no future in Greece or in other countries too because the, as I said Portugal let me just give you this example because for me it, it was very striking young people from Portugal which also has a ver, have a very high level of uh, unemployment 
go to their former colonies, Angola for example. Who could imagine that Portuguese youth would move we'll to Angola to find a job? A job. So uh, this is in a sense humiliating. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is an anger rising, and this anger is expressed, unfortunately, by these forces that say, destroy everything, destroy Europe. But what I, I always try to say to young people when I discuss privately or even publicly, is that Europe is our home. When your home does not function well, you try to put things in order. You don't blow it up. If we want to burn a house, then we'll have nowhere to live because in a globalized world with such an important competition, no country, even the strongest one, can be on its own. One of the reasons that the European Union was formed uh, was in order to avoid the repetition of the situation that led to the Second World War, perhaps even to the First World War. Uh, we see now the development of a situation where uh, Europe is in question, Europe itself, which means this very idea is in question. Are you afraid that we might have a repetition of uh, a situation that led to war and to strife in Europe? I just told you the question concerning unemployment. Mm -hmm. Unemployment is a bomb, and in my view, the major problem in Europe is not debt, is unemployment. This is, you know, a bomb at the very European structure of Europe. So it's the first thing that one should address in this point. Histor history does not repeat itself, but it's a great, there is a great danger of authoritarianism and uh, anger being expressed in ways that we would th think they belong to the past. Nobody can be sure what will happen. Let us work for more than less Europe. I think this is the only way to move forward. And uh, where do you think this way to move forward will come from? Who will be able to express, let's say, a new approach to things? Because obviously, from what we, we see up to now, uh, existing, let's say, political fi figures, both in Europe and in the member states, are not trusted by a very large uh, percentage of the population. You're absolutely right. Is, is, are politicians in the making existing at this moment? Do we have that kind of, let's say, hope for the future or, no, or not yet? We must have hope for the future. Otherwise, uh, there's no hope uh, for our countries. It's, you're right that uh, politicians, not only in my country, Greece, but also Europe, are not up to the uh, situation. They're not up to the challenge, which is huge, which is enormous, because this was our future or total disaster. I think from all quarters, academia, journalism, media, opinion leaders, we must push political leaders to take their responsibilities. Because this will be a non-one-off situation. If we lose this challenge, if we lose a stake, we won't have a second chance. And these European elections are the very, very critical test. Because we are faced with the danger to have the most anti-European parliament ever. Yes. If the European forces, and I mean all pro-European forces, left or right, cannot form the vast majority of the chamber, then uh, I think Europe will be in the most difficult position ever. And we cannot have this as an option. Do you consider, the, uh, on the level of communication, do you consider the level of communication about these elections, both mostly from the European Union itself, and from the member state, is it adequate? No. No, no Is it convincing not. for the younger, especially no, people? No, because we don't explain to them why Europe is an absolute necessity, where, why we cannot do without Europe. Because, you know, I, when I speak mostly to young people, what I usually give as an example is I ask them to think one day without European Union, without Schengen, without open borders, where you need to change money, where you need uh, the passport, where you don't have the services, nothing. It would be a nightmare. The problem is that a very large percentage of the population doesn't even remember, doesn't even know the situation. So they don't have the image of Europe before the European Union. That's true. And they have the image of a Europe uh, who punishes through the memoranda, troikas, etc., etc. 
the challenge is to change this image and prove that they can there is a different Europe that is possible, that a progressive Europe, a Europe which is more human, which addresses the main issues like unemployment, like growth, is possible. Because the Europe that the majority up to now presents to us is a Europe that nobody wants to have anything to do with it. But there is the possibility to have another Europe. We need leadership, we need a different way of addressing the issue. And most of all, we need to take care of a house, which is Europe. But of course, uh, Europe is the coefficient of the member states. So uh, I think the major, the major first step would be for the member states to change their attitude towards Europe. Not blame, for example, Europe for everything that happens. Uh, not treating uh, people that perhaps they are sending to the institutions of the European Union as people that they want second class. Exactly, they exactly, exactly. Uh, so it, sh it should start, I suppose, from the member states. You're right, because up to now, for example, uh, concerning uh, my colleagues, members of European Parliament, we are like second class politicians. In many countries, we are as... Um, highly pays tourists, mm -hmm. as if the parliament pays us to do tourism uh, to and uh, from Greece. You cannot imagine the huge amount of job that is effectuated in the European Parliament. 80% of all European legislation now is approved by the parliament, so the job is enormous. We work tremendous amounts of time, but nobody in the member states knows about, knows about it. it exactly. And if the member states do not take the responsibility to present what the members of European Parliament do, why should the citizens know about The member states usually, usually present everything possible, everything positive as their own work, exactly. and everything negative as the work of the European yes, Union. The, Europe is bad, yes. we are the good. Exactly. We all know that it's not the case. Uh, and. Uh, we are at, at such a critical point that each one must take its own, his own responsibilities, I think. Well, let's hope it will happen. Marlena Kopa, member of the European Parliament from Greece, thank you very much for being with us. Uh, thank you very uh, much. Thank you very much for being with us at New Europe Studios, when you can eat, drink, relax, and watch us make the news.